welcome back to Shonen Archive. I did not accidentally click start streaming. I clicked start record. I'm Wokey, and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire well-being to watching every single Shonen Jump anime currently available to us. Uh, starting with Gintama being our main one, and then someday when we're less busy getting back to Kuroko... It's, uh, Kuroko's currently on a big six-episode one, so it's gonna be a while <laughs> before we find the time to get back to it, but it'll be worth it when we finally get there. But before we can get there, we're gonna be talking about Gintama, and we talk about episodes 227 through, uh, 231, and I will be doing the recaps for it this time. So get ready for that. Are you ready, Zen? I am ready. Ready? Okay, great. Then we're going to start by talking about jump crossovers. This is the part where I would tell you a little bit about Sket Dance, but unfortunately I was too busy. So just wait till we actually talk about Sket Dance to learn more about Sket Dance. Uh, but the one thing you do have to know is that it was actually created by someone who actually worked on Gintama. One of the... What is it called? The, is it an assistant? When someone helps the mangaka, you know what I'm talking about. When someone helps, yeah, like, uh, who helps them? Right, yeah, it's assistant. Mm -hmm. So a former assistant of Gintama went on to make Sket Dance, and it's really funny because Sket Dance is basically if Gintama actually fully committed to its bit of actually helping people. <laughs> is I think the best way of I could explain it, except for it's set in the real world, and it features a lot of the voice actors from Gintama as well as they talk about in this episode. And so, yeah, they have a crossover, uh, one that I believe actually happened in the manga as well, which is something that never happens. I think, actually, someone brought this up last uh, time we recorded in the comments. It's actually very rare for a crossover to happen legitimately inside of a manga. <laughs> I think the only other one that I can think of is the Dr. Slump and Dragon Ball one, and that's because they exist in the exact same world and were both by Akira Toriyama. And I assume he just said, yeah, I give myself permission to use Dr. Slump. <laughs> it's that easy. <laughs> but all the other ones, they usually don't actually happen in the manga, like um, the one that's talked about in this episode, Toriko and One Piece, that obviously took place in a completely different when world. When I saw that Toriko crossover, I was like... Is this a Toriko reference? And then sure as shit. <laughs> I forgot that Jump wanted Toriko to be really big for a while. That that honestly slipped my mind until this episode. Yes, it's something that we will probably talk about once we finish talking about this episode. But damn, did they really want Toriko? They to... wanted Toriko to be a big thing. Yes, and it 100% hit big with Neo Okyo, who absolutely loves no, Toriko. The one I, no, I actually like, I think Toriko's very good. No, but, we, we both like Toriko, yeah. but th yeah. there's a lot of things against Toriko <laughs> that uh, that stopped it from reaching its higher heights and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, let's talk about the actual uh, episode now. Episode 227, speaking of crossovers, don't forget about uh, Aliens vs. Predators, which I disagree with this title. I forget about Aliens vs. Predator <laughs> all the time. <laughs> uh, so the plot line goes like this. Basically, the in order to celebrate a huge milestone, the Gintama crew are going to... They're going to be forced to do a collaboration with Sket Dance. Um, even though they say that, hey, it's not a big deal that we're going to be doing collaborations. We collab with some of the biggest of Jump ever. And then Shimpachi brings up, those weren't collaborations. We were just ripping them off <laughs> without permission. Yep. Without which, permission to do so. Yeah. <laughs> which is probably why they don't like us is what he said right afterwards. <laughs> which is uh, pretty funny. Um, Gintoki takes this as very serious as he says, you guys don't have to understand. Get Dance, look at them. They're basically us, but set in high school. And look at this. They took our old time slot. We fought for that time slot for years, and then they just show up and take it. <laughs> We can't let this uh, hand. Uh, we can't let this take it down. We have to systematically destroy them if we're gonna keep our place in jump as it is. And that's when the Sket Dance crew actually come in, and Bossoon shows up, and Sock starts talking uh, mad shit, saying like, "Don't worry about it. We're gonna be taking over from this because we are basically you, but we actually." do what we set out to do and then there's some gags about like the shared voice actors switch is very obviously just gintoki but it's never brought up in this episode because <laughs> it's the exact same voice actor except for with a slight a voice modulator on his parts 
uh, Himiko voices uh, Jugum, which apparently they say the only reason that she voiced Jugum was specifically so that they could say that she voices she voiced Runny Diarrhea, and it was meant to be a <laughs> deliberate attack on Get Dance, which is pretty funny. <laughs> Um, and that Basun is voiced by, uh, Shinpachi's friend, which is, uh, Takichin. It's exactly the same. He's like, come out here, Takichin, I know who it is. And then his response is to bring out, uh, the character on Skate Dance that has the exact same voice as Shinpachi. <laughs> he's like, no, 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 take him away. So they start fighting. They say they can only be one boring, <laughs> there can only be one boring manga on Shonen Jump. <laughs> Because neither one of them are uh, anime or manga that really focus on power leveling or any of the cool stuff that you see in Jump. So therefore they have to battle for supremacy, so they said that they're going to do it. Uh, they end up going to the to- island from Toriko, um, where it straight up is just a Toriko reference, even with the power levels of the... Uh, of the um, animals that you see in there and then it said it turns out that they're going to be fighting for the pizzazz pizzazz fruit which is the reason that they're going for it is that whoever gets it will be the most pizzazziest person ever um i guess in modern day parlance it would be like saying like it would be like the aura aura fruit like they want that style of just like you're the guy when you get this fruit they say the only side effect you don't have to worry about you'll still be able to swim, but now your penis will be replaced with a hammer. In the case of you're a woman, then you don't your crotch just gets a hammer. Um, that's the only side effect of the pizzazz pizzazz fruit. Gintoki and Basun start fighting over it because both of them start. Uh, the other two of the crew start saying like the reason that they're fighting so hard for it is that both of them have a huge chip on their shoulder. Basun because he says too many people consider him too boring to be the main character of Sket Dance, and Gintoki has always been very let down by the fact that he doesn't have anything cool like a Bunkai. I think they even start saying, like, I've been hearing him practice the Kamehameha in secret, and he's like, that's so sad. <laughs> that's so, so unbelievably sad. Uh, so they start looking for the pizzazz pizzazz fruit, but they both kind of give up because they can't find it, and then they try to, try to take sim- sympathy from the other members by pretending to be like they've been downtrodden and everything, but then all that gets thrown away the second that they actually see the pizzazz pizzazz fruit. So they start fighting for it, and they go for it, and it looks like they're going to gut it, but then a man shows up who says, I'm a former person who used to be a carpenter, but I'm too old and my hand can't do it, but my dick works great. If only I had the, <laughs> if only I had a hammer where my groin was and I could just hammer away of it. Um, Gintoki and Basun both take, take up his offer, and they both go to get the fruit to give it to the old man, and they do it by chucking it directly into his fucking face. They do a cool little combo move, too. They do. It's like a, it's like, they do, it's funny, too, because they're playing the, the sad Gintama music. The one where it's like, where it's at the end of the arc, where it's going to be like the big moment, and they just like completely toss it at this guy's head. So the guy takes it. He has all the pizzazz in the world. The other two mem- the other four members try to cheer them up, saying, like, listen, guys, you really showed that you were cool, so you shouldn't feel so bad about missing out on not having any pizzazz. And that's when both Gintoki and Basun uh, reveal that juices of the fruit went into them, and now they have uh, hammers in their groins. And then everyone just leaves, deciding that they would rather just, like, not deal with them anymore. And, and Gintoki and Basun mourn their crotch per turn Pete hammers. And they go away. And then we get a version of the ED, both in the opening. We actually get a version of the uh, the opening where the beginning, like, three seconds where they do the little uh, smile that they do. Except for it's the Sket Dance characters. And at the end of the ED... Uh, the Sket Dance characters are dressed up as people from uh, Gintama. Uh, I believe Himiko is Kagura, Basun is Gin- uh, Gintoki, and Switch is um, Shimpachi. And then at the end, uh, they do an. Ev- they also show <laughs> the the little text scroll that they have. They show the three characters that the VAs played that are shared between them from Sket Dance, which is uh, like Setakachin. Uh, Jugum and Kintoki there at the end, and then the uh, Odd Jobs crew are dressed up as characters from Sket Dance, where Kintoki is Himiko, uh, Shimpachi is Switch, and Kagura is Basun. 
And that's the end of the crossover right there. And then they show a next episode preview, which is the preview for the Sket Dance episode. <laughs> Not the next <laughs> Gitava, which is pretty good. Uh, and that is episode 227. How do you feel about it, Zen? Yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, I found myself laughing at more bits than I thought it would. Like the, uh, the part where they're like... Um, Gintama just isn't allowed to recognize that it's actually successful because if they do admit that they are successful, then they won't be able to keep just making fun of every other manga without any re- repercussions at all anymore. <laughs> um, I thought that was funny. That was pretty good. I thought the bit where they're both trying to garner sympathy from their groups mm-hmm. was really funny. Where they're like, wait a minute, they're not even moving forward. Now they're just walking in place, <laughs> waiting for us to say something to them because they're like standing next to each other. Um, Boston and, and Gintoki in general were a very funny um, like combination mm-hmm. of uh, of characters, and then I also liked um, just the reveal of the old man going to kill himself because he can't <laughs> hammer anymore, and if only his dick was a hammer, he would he would live. And then he jumps off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> so it, funny. It is, it is really funny. I was like, ah, damn, if only there was a way. Like, he doesn't even care about the pizzazz part. What he cares about is the hammer penis. Yeah, he doesn't care about And then when he finally gets the phone, they throw the fruit at him, and they show him later, he's got the hammer dick, and he's also covered in, like, feathers and, like, fancy clothes. Yep. That's pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, I did also like that moment where with Basun and Gintoki teaming up and they're like, we accept your your request. And then the, the shot of the way that the, the first of all, the way that uh, Gintoki holds Basun so that he swings him so he can get the pizzazz fruit. And then he chucks it directly into the man's face <laughs> is really good. Like that slow. They do like a three uh, different camera view shot of the throw to the face, which is really good. Um, yeah, I ended up, uh, liking this one. I actually like Sket Dance. Uh, I know it's hard to believe because I'm a player of Ore Collection and I played during the meta where Sket Dance was a menace. I actually think they we lost... They were super good, yeah. Yeah, I think we actually legitimately lost 50% of the player base. So we went from 400 players to 200 players during the Sket Dance meta. <laughs> we... <laughs> there was a definite drop-off when they became powerful. Uh, I'll say two out of the three members because unfortunately Switch was not very good. So I actually really do like the the Sket Dance crew. Uh, and I like them showing up here and just how different they are. I like the different philosophies, even though they're exact, they're very similar in what their designs are. Because like we don't do any of the the weird potty humor, so don't try and defile us with your jokes. When they started making the hammer jokes, it was pretty funny. Um, I like them bringing in the different VAs for everything, and also the reveal that the only reason they had her voice Jugum was specifically so they could make fun of her when the crossover happens. That was the only reason they brought her in to voice a monkey. <laughs> Uh, which is pretty good, and also the face Gintoki makes when he's just like, yeah, we did that. We want to feel bad about being the monkey. Um, it was pretty good. I did like the the, the opening being slightly different. Like, they even do, uh, instead of saying uh, Gintama, it just says Sket Dance. I thought that was a really nice touch. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that ending, the, the I also really like that the reason, the other reason they say they do this, it goes like, oh, well, we can't, we can't hope to be on the same pinnacle level of One Piece x Toriko. We just can't get to that level, which really brings up the fact that, like you said, I forgot that uh, as we go through some of these old ones, we'll see the definite age of them trying to really hype up Toriko to be the next big thing. <laughs> Because I had actually almost actually forgotten that out of all the Shonen Jump series to get a crossover with One Piece, it was Toriko that and, got And it. Dragon Ball. Yes, that's right. There was one with Dragon Ball as well. You're right. Yeah, it was, it was Goku versus Luffy versus Toriko. The three, right? From that era of the yeah, Yuma. The big <laughs> three, yeah. The, the famed three most famous uh, manga ever. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's what they call them. The big, the big three. The big three, ever. yeah. Dragon Ball, One Piece, and Toriko. <laughs> yeah, they, they, I, I don't know why. I know apparently he's like Oda's best friend, so I'm sure that probably helped a little bit. A little bit. Um, and I genuinely think Toriko is very good. Um, yeah, Toriko, Toriko. But it obviously wasn't blowing the world down. You know, it wasn't changing lives or anything. 
Um, but they were pushing the hell out of it as like the next big thing. They were. And the funny thing is... And it's is... funny too because Toriko fans, as far as I'm aware, universally do not like the anime of it. No, not really. I think the only person I've ever heard talk about it was Neo. And even then he said there's parts of it that are really nice, but then at a certain point it goes off the rails. I really like the Toriko movie. Um... Because it has an animated version of the guy who sings the, uh, uh, Don, 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 I think, who's that old guy from the Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball Super opening? The one who did the, um, the, the UI Goku song. Oh, I don't know the name of the guy. I know the song you're talking about. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about then. But the the same old man that Dokkan brought out to, to, to sing for one of their anniversaries. <laughs> They brought him out, and then they said, hey, old man, would you like to do a multi? And he said, sure. And then he got, like, shit, and his face was, like, defeated. <laughs> like, you could see, he's like, well, you could see the visible disappointment on his face, where he was like, I was like, damn, he's so real for that. Because he was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this fakes for the SSR Piccolo? I don't know what the fuck you want me to do with this. Um, But he's in the beginning of it, because he sings the Torco theme. Uh... So yeah, it's really funny to think about the crossovers that they were going for. It was like, that was the big one that they thought. There's like, we're standing on the heels of Toriko in One Piece. <laughs> the combination to it. And the fact that at a certain point they were just like, actually, we just go to Toriko's Island and we're just going to rip off One Piece as well. Like they even say at the beginning, it's like, all you do is just rip off the other mangas without permissions. And then they just do it halfway into this one. <laughs> it's pretty good. But yep, as in terms of a little fun collab between the two, I think it worked out pretty good. Uh, you can definitely tell that Skat Dance is probably pretty heavily inspired by Gintama because of uh, how similar they are in structure, the literal three-person crew, and the fact that one of the dudes even worked under uh, Sorachi. Um, forgive me if I don't... The, the monkey. He goes by the ape man, uh, the creator of Gintama. The fact that he worked under him, it kind of shows a lot of the influence there. And yeah, this is where I would say we would usually go off to go watch the other one, but we're going to save it for when we actually get the sket dance because we need that Kintama episode because, like I said, the episode before it is a really big bummer. <laughs> so we're going to need some form of a laugh <laughs> of some kind. <laughs> All right. But that's uh, that's the episode. So let's go on to the next one, which is episode 228, which has a new OP and a new ED in it. Um which is what was the name of this new op dilemma is the name of the new op and the new ed is called enagura um so yeah new op plays uh shimpachi introduces his uh girlfriend he says to ote that i have a new girlfriend um and she goes like what that's that's crazy and he's like i want you to meet her and she's like oh no i don't know if i'm ready for it and it's revealed that it's a character in a video game and this calls her to bring in Gintoki because they need, she needs help. Like, there's a situation going on here, whatever weird shit Shinpachi's up to, uh, it, it, she needs them um, to cut it out. So there's a new fad going around the Kabuki district, which is that everyone's playing this new game called Love Choris or Chorisi, something like that. But the I don't remember how they pronounced it. Yeah, it's some. It's like it's. They say it different from how the translation goes, because as it goes, but love. I think it's love. We'll go with Love Choris from from this point forward. Um, which I think is based off of a real game that was in like a real visual. You would not know this. I would know this, but unfortunately, I can't remember the name of it. I also forgot to say the name of this episode. Love is neither plus or nor minus. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> when I'm actually in charge of doing the the thing of it, I get I get lost in the sauce. Anyway, let's continue on. So a bunch of people are a, a bunch of desperate people are in love with their virtual girlfriend and they see a news report on it and Shimpachi goes like man that's crazy it's so sad isn't that right Momo <laughs> Momo as he talks to his virtual girlfriend about how everyone else is uh in such a sad state of a pair Altai pleads with Kentoki to do something and that's when Kondo shows up and says, like, let me explain to you this about dating sims. Basically, the less luck you have with women, the more you'll get hooked on a visual novel because that's all what you're doing. Um, and he also reveals that he's a master of the visual novel as well. Um, 
because of course he is. Uh, if they want to drag Shinpachi back, then they need to go into the game himself and reach his level. So they have Gintoki try and play the game, and Kondo tries to explain the mechanics of it, and he says that there are three heroines in it. There's Sayako, the one Shinpachi has, uh, which is like the older sister type, which they call creepy. Uh, they really call up Shinpachi for being that interested into that type of uh, character. Um... No, the the Saika Sa- is the one that um Kondo has. Is that that's his virtual yes. girlfriend. Momo is the one Shinpachi has. And then finally there's the widowed Pinko, which is based off of a real Japanese woman up until the end of uh this little tiny arc. And that's the one Kintoki ends up having to choose because he has to play like this little like airship mini game and he completely fails it, so he's stuck uh forever in the Pinko arc. In the Pinko um route. Um he really regrets it. He says, I don't want to be stuck with Pinko, but Kondo explains to him, like, hey, you're kind of stuck in this, and now you're just going to have to, like, train her. Um, he forcefully closes the game, and then he says, like, listen, you're going to have to go in there and now apologize to her. Uh, when he opens up to apologize, he sees that he closed it so hard that he's actually killed Pinko's son, which is the <laughs> actual, which is, I forget his name, it's like Izo. En- en- Enyo or something like en- that. The, yeah, the reason I'm having trouble remembering, because they keep censoring these fucking names, because they're based off yeah, of real people. They keep bleeping them. They keep bleeping them. Um, so he's accidentally killed the son, uh, Inari, that's what it was. Uh, so now she holds a grudge against him, uh, and Kondo says like, hey man, you're just gonna have to keep up with it, because the only way you're gonna be able to win this is that you have to enter a tournament and then if you win that tournament, you can finally break Shimpachi away from the illusion that he's under. So he keeps playing, and because Kondo says, like, you have to basically be with her all the time. Um, he starts, like, waking up with her, and she says, like, uh, <laughs> um, he, like, wakes up and is like, I wish I could sleep all the time. Like, my son sleeps <laughs> because he died. <laughs> Or, you know, what did she say? I remember, She said something, because I remember it fucking killed me, because it was really funny. Yeah. It was like, uh, it must be nice. To sleep as much as you want. My son will never sleep again because he's dead. <laughs> That's what it was. Um, so he start he has to start eating with her. He starts doing it, and this starts to affect his life because he's like, I don't know if I can keep doing this. She still hasn't forgiven me for accidentally killing her son. Um, and it's like the day of the tournament, and it's also really bad because now uh, Kagura doesn't respect me anymore. <laughs> She looks at him differently now because of all the way he's been a- interacting with Pinko. Um, and then that's when he starts. So Kagura starts talking shit to him. Uh, she starts saying something about like the differences between men and women. And that's when he notices to the side of him that Pinko is there and she's carrying Inari's uh, dead body with him. And um, Sadaharu starts barking at him and he tries to leave and uh kondo picks him up and he starts saying and then he can real then he realizes that he can actually see kondo's virtual girlfriend and he says oh okay you made it to the final step you've made it into the love chores hole and you're actually able to see your virtual girlfriend so no matter what he does pinko will always be there (laughs) and he'll always be there and as you see in the car she's like literally running up to him to keep up with him (laughs) him and the the her dead son so they go to the tournament because it's the day of um when they get there, uh, Kondo says, like, because <laughs> Gintoki says, like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to win with Pinko. And Pinko's like, says, like, I will get my vengeance on you. <laughs> I will, Like, she wants to kill Gintoki. And Kondo says, like, ah, oh, I see you picked the Yandere. It's a very interesting archetype for a Pinko. He's like, I, I didn't pick a, yand- a Yandere. She just wants to kill me. There's a difference because I killed her son. <laughs> <laughs> give me your give me your psycho and he goes like nah she's uh she's loyal to me forever um and that's when okita shows up and then okita immediately puts her in a dog collar and is like all right this is actually my my girl the entire time and then it turns out yeah, that... what was it? i forget what he said he was like uh what was it like to serve someone that you despise or yep, something yeah. talking about kondo <laughs> talking about kondo and it completely breaks poor Kondo's heart as he realizes that it was it was nothing. Their relationship was nothing but Okita forcing her to do something she didn't want to do. Um, they also bump into Tojo, whose Pinko is modeled, uh, modeled after Kyube, uh, which is just Pinko, um, but in Kyube's uh, girl outfit, the more girlish outfit that she has. 
Um, and then Sachan is dressed like Sayuka, but her pinko looks exactly like Gintoki, and she's pretending to be a Sayuka. The reason is is that she say she saw <laughs> she saw uh, Gintoki being with pinko as a sign of her of him leaving her. So now she's trying to make him feel as bad, but he's more angry that there's a pinko that looks exactly like him. <laughs> Uh, and then yeah, that was, it was pin, pin, right? Yeah, pin. Yeah, he was pin John, <laughs> yeah. pin John instead of Finko. Um, and then everyone, as everyone's like arguing and fighting with each other, there's a giant beam of light, and that's the arrival of Shimpachi in his Momo. And it's like everyone there who are like all the otakus are like, holy shit! It's like a god, a god, and a goddess has just entered the room. Um. And if wonders, and then what? Gintoki wonders if he's actually going to be able to beat him, and that's where the episode ends. <sighs> All right, Zen, how do you feel about this one? Uh it was good. Pinko was really funny. Uh, pretty much everything that Pinko did had me laughing. <laughs> the uh, the bit where um, when he's sleeping and he's like, "I I decide when I wake up," and he she was like, "My son will never wake up again." <laughs> had me dying uh that shit was really good um going to the tournament thing Mm -hmm. and shinpachi appearing with like the ultimate fake girlfriend (laughs) who's like in a (laughs) princess outfit and everything was really funny Mm -hmm. um and then the reveal that kondo is so awful that he can't even get a fake girlfriend to work properly was good yep that's really good oh no my favorite joke in the episode was actually almost at the beginning where um when when kondo just opens the drawer of their house and he's just laying in it and he just starts talking to them like it's normal and gintoki just goes why is he up there why is he acting like that's not weird It is really funny the way he just so casually is like he's also an expert at this as well. That was the the other funny bit about it. It's really it's, it is a really good episode. It's a really good start for uh, this tiny little arc one. Um, I also like that apparently. So the translation they have for the tournament is called the the My Wife World Tournament. Um, and apparently in Japanese it's called the Ora no Yumi Tenkaichi Budokai. <laughs> Which is based off of the Tenkaichi Budokai, which is the the world's martial arts tournament from Dragon Ball. It was, yeah, what, what did Kentucky call it when he went in? He was like, "This is the saddest tournament I've ever been around." <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, it is a very sad fact. I also we'll get into it in the next one, but there's a lot. We continue the running theme of they put all the animation of the cute girl dances into the otaku's and no one else. <laughs> It's really funny that they continue to do that. But yeah, I thought it was a pretty good introduction from it. I really liked how delusional Shinpachi was. I liked how... um, I think there was also... I wonder if this is based off of the guy who married Hatsune Miku. Do you know that? I don't know. I've heard of, of that, like occurrence i don't know if this episode was based on that it would make sense i think i think there's two dudes i the one i know for sure is that there's a dude who married hatsune miku and there's another dude who married the girl in his ds because there was a game where you actually did basically this this is why it looks kind of like a a ds um it's because this is actually a legitimate ds game where you like talk to your girlfriend and i think he actually married i don't know how the marriage is going i know the guy who's with hatsune miku is still happily with hatsune miku so hopefully the guy with the ds is still with his wife (laughs) but i don't actually know the full fate of him uh i assume it's a making fun of that kind of specific trend that was going around uh, around this time uh but yeah it was a it was a good bit here i I was are still happily together they are yeah. yeah. No, the the Hatsune Miku. Oh person. yes, 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 yeah. Okay, I was just thinking yeah. about the other one. Yeah, he's still with Hatsune Miku. I think Wait, he said, okay, what's the other one? What's the other one? Guy who married his what? Married his DS. Try and see if you can find that one cuz I know there's a game that is basically like this that it's based off of cuz like I said, I'm aware of a decent amount of visual novels cuz Married I... Nene Anagasaki, a virtual character from the Nintendo DS game Love Plus. The wedding is not legally binding, but it is his way to express his devotion. Um, Any sign that they're still together? I'm going to put 
I'm going to put divorce in the search. <laughs> no. into it. I can't. I don't want to believe that. I want to believe that Ludwig can transcend all forms. If Wanda can get with the toaster, this man can get with his DS. I see nothing that's. Well, I guess they can't get divorced because it's not a legally binding marriage. But I see nothing that says that they have have broken up. Okay, so I'm going to assume that he's still hanging out with her then. Um, I, he's going to. What's he going to do when the, all the DSs stop working? See, that's watch. That's my hit movie coming up for Japan. Zen, a man who married the girl in his DS is about to run into the problem of they've no longer supported the DS system. Oh wait, better idea. We're gonna upgrade it to the Nintendo DS and say specifically when the shutdown notice went down, he has limited time left with his virtual wife. So now he has to convince this fake Nintendo, we'll call him Nintendo, to keep the service up so that he could stay with his virtual wife. All right, write that down. Get ready for it <laughs> for my hit love uh, story coming soon. But anyway, yeah, it's based off of those kind of stories from dudes like that. I knew that there was something. I didn't. Oh, that's why this the title is Love is Neither Plus or Minus because the game is Love Plus. I thought it was a joke on uh, being plus or minus in a fighting game. <laughs> because in the next episode... Oh, there's... yeah, I guess that does make sense. Yeah, that does make sense. Okay, there we go. Sneaky ass. Like, I thought it was a fighting game reference, because when I hear plus or minus, I always assume it with fighting games. And they do actually play a fighting game in the next episode, so I thought maybe it was something like that, but no. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Let's go on to the next episode, episode uh, 229, Making It Through Love. Uh, Zen, get ready for me to tell you about this. Uh, <laughs> uh, the tournament begins with all the entrants splitting into groups based off the herons they choose. They are starting with Momo's group. Um, and they're specifically going into a... They're like different settings. I believe theirs is a park. So one of the dudes in there decides to um, destroy the competition by boldly... Um, making out with his momo and that basically causes a lot of dudes to go like how dare you defile my momo i know that's not my momo and then they fucking like get got like spider-man in avengers <laughs> when they, they 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 crumble into dust and their momo disappears and this works on all of them except for one which is shimpachi and Shimpachi is able to destroy his Momo by showing that their love is pure. They actually say like it is parameters. There's the the they're all across the board just middling. <laughs> There's nothing like extreme about any one of them. They're in a relationship that has not advanced very far. But it turns out that that's the strongest kind of relationship because it is a pure one. So it ends up being that they set up an indirect kiss, which Shimpachi fucks up. And then she turns it into a real one, and that's enough to completely destroy and devastate the one remaining Momo that it was out there. Uh, next, um, there's also a panel of judges, uh, which Kondo is a part of them, one of them. <laughs> uh, yes, Kondo is one of the judges, and Gintoki's very irritated about that. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, he declares that Shibachi is the virgin god. <laughs> Because Do you of... remember the names of each of the judges? Because um, Kondo has the funniest one. Uh, no, I can't, I can't remember. What, what, do you know what they were? Do you I don't remember all three of them. It, it was One of them was like um, romance, and the other one was like um, thrill or something. Mm -hmm. And then Kondo's was uh, like hard on ability. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> it was fucking hilarious. That's really good. Um, so yeah, he declares him the virgin god, and um, they go on to the next round, which is with Saiko, and a lot of people try to do the same thing. They try and copy the technique of the indirect kiss, but it doesn't work because Okita's a part of the group, and he shows him uh, domination, and he makes his <laughs> Saiko drink with a pig, the water, the, the tea that he brought, and he dominates so hard that he causes all the other girls to leave their dudes and be with him instead. And he's declared a god as well. <laughs> they don't say he's a god of what, but he says, like, he's obviously some form of a god. Um, they get to the Pinkos round, and uh, the judges shut it down because they said nobody cares about Pinko. <laughs> Yeah, they're like Pinko doesn't matter, and they all got really pissed about they, it. They do. They guess like this is this is some bullshit. And Gitoki declares that he, um, in order to prove it back that they can do it, he says that in front of everyone that he actually um, 
loves his pinko, so they want to stand by it. So uh, they end because of his like bold move. They actually have uh, a pinko round. Uh, Tojo is the first one who comes up. Uh, but his Pinko is sick of doing the baby play that he's been forcing him to do. We did not bring him up at all, because it was maybe the one thing that was freaking me out the most. It was, was this... it was too much. Yeah, it, it, it was, was it much. was a little, it was like, this is why Sket Dance was talking about you guys losing your time slot, because you guys keep doing this stuff, like, in a, in a, yeah. in an no, arc, it was a lot. In an arc full of fetishes, this somehow felt over the top. This one was the one that broke the camel's back. But he, uh, his Pinko, thankfully, is tired of the baby play, so she calls his manager. Um, <laughs> which causes them to go into Street Fighter 2, where he tries to do... What is one of the the kicks? He tries... He does the dulcum kick. The the dulcum dive kick. You know, the one where he... Spins. Oh, yeah, the, the torpedo dive kick. Yeah, he loses to the manager, though. Um... And so he is eliminated out from under that. Also, the location that they're going to is a love hotel. Uh, all the other two were like a zoo the, and a park, but they get the love hotel. So they're, Kentucky is expecting the worst of what they want him to do with this pinko. Uh, so yeah, Tojo loses and because his pinko just gets tired of his shit. Um, and he loses. Sachan goes to her game and she's modded it to be exactly like Dragon Quest. Um... And hers is also really funny because Gitoki says, like, you guys are just, like, dropping all pretense that we're trying to hide here. Because, like, the little dialogue in the Dragon Quest thing is, like, please remember to bring your condom with you when you finish. Um, and they end up going for it and she ends up not being able to complete it because she complains that they only have Cypress sticks to go forward with. Which is, like, the weakest starting item in Dragon Quest. So she refuses to kind of go forward and she ends up going against the managers and a bunch of different managers. Um, and, uh, Tojo, who lost previously, is now one of the managers and is, like, a certain type of new employee. But he's not earned the right to be called a manager yet. <laughs> he has to earn it first. And then Gidoki says, what the hell do I care about what manager B is going through? <laughs> I just wanted to be away from there. Um, so now it's up to Gintoki. All his competition has kind of, like, screwed themselves. Because there was only, like, three Pinko intro intros, and it was just him. <laughs> Those were the three. Um, the champions from the previous bout show up, though. Um, Momo takes the initiative, saying that she wants to go inside the hotel with Shinpachi. And Sayaka goes completely crazy and turns into Okita, and then turns the tables on him and dominates him so she puts him in the dog collar and tells him to walk inside of the um uh walk inside the hotel uh with the competition gone kintogi starts to wonder like hey am i gonna be able to do this um and he's like paralyzed to kind of go forward at all because of the idea of going into a love hotel with pinko um, and Kondo starts telling him, like, you need to go forward to it. Um, you need to stand behind your girl no matter what. Um, and during, like, his most biggest defeat moment, he, like, looks at Pinko. He looks at people talking trash on Pinko. And he, like, starts, like, sh he shoots off, like, a blast coming from his groin is, like, the best way I could describe it. He, like, powers up starting from the groin. Um... And this causes Pinko's uh, veil to get away from her face. And it's revealed that she's actually like a um, a beautiful woman underneath it. And she also is a, a Sundere as well. And everyone is in shock because they're like, holy shit, he awoken Pinko into her like a new form. Which is something Kondo has been saying is that the your Pinko will take the form of what you like the most. Uh, and I guess this is them finally turning it. And now that she's in, um, I'm getting an email from one of my employees. So I have to query quickly, just exit out of that and deal with that later. I'm not on the clock yet. <laughs> Give me a bit. Um, uh, so yes, it revealed. So when, now that she's in her new form, she declares that he, that that's my girlfriend. And she says like, I'm not with you. And that's when her son says like, you actually need to accept it. And now the son has turned into a beautiful son. <laughs> He's no longer the ugly son that he was. Cause his black bar was also like shot off from his face. And then he reveals that his uh, mom is not actually his mom and that it, they were inherited from, a um 
a forced marriage and she was actually never been with the dad at all. And Takondo is like, holy shit, this is amazing. She's a widow that actually has never seen anything. She's like the ultimate girl. And then Kondo declares like, this is a true illusion. Not one that, <laughs> a, a true illusion made to withstand reality rather than a fantasy to hide from it. So he says that this is a version of uh, Pinko that is made to uh, adjust to reality as opposed to trying to hide from real life problems and such. Um, they go deeper into it trying to explain it, but we'll, we'll go into it when we when I finish this. Anyway, um, Gintoki says, all right, sweet. And so he goes into the hotel room and starts to he starts taking off his clothes to have sex with uh, Pinko. Um Shimpachi says, like, we can't lose this, Okita. And then they cut to Okita, who's getting his, his ass absolutely whipped inside the other room. So Shimpachi goes, like, okay, I guess it's only me that can stand up against them. Uh, and then they have a battle of Tetris, because they say, we can't actually show you two having sex. So we're going to have a game of Tetris <laughs> for censorship reasons. Um, and they start going around, and they start fighting each other in the Tetris. Um, Shinpachi starts to struggle and then Kintoki is like super calm and he basically says that, um, love is like an illusion. He says something like to the effect of the hottest girl that you know still farts and poops. So you, you can't just keep living in a fantasy of what they always will look like. You have to understand that there will also be ugly sides of them as well. Um, and this makes it so that, Shimp uh, that Shimpachi ends up losing to Kintoki, and it breaks the illusion, because in order to win, Kintoki basically stripped down to nothing, and he's naked, and this breaks the illusion that all the other dudes were under, and they go like, I can't believe we could have been on that, we could have been like that guy. Um, we have to throw away this game before we start becoming a weird pervert like he is, so they stop playing the game. And then Gintoki goes like, eh, whatever. And he continues playing his game. And then there's also a very funny shot beforehand of Sachan taking pictures of Gintoki while he's naked. <laughs> as everyone else is abandoning to leave because I like, end calling him a sicko. She's just like in the background going, oh yeah, keep going. <laughs> like constant shots, which is pretty funny. And that is episode 229. Zen, how do you feel about the end of the Chosis arc? It was funny. Uh, the... W the way they delivered the message felt very weird at first. Mm -hmm. Because the way Gintoki phrases it is he's like, um, you create an illusion with your game to, to mask, like, because you want to reject reality. So you create this illusion with your game. But a real man creates an illusion to to make reality possible or something like that mm -hmm. and it it really sounded like he was saying you use these pretty anime girls but a real man just sucks it up when his wife is ugly <laughs> <laughs> just like talk what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> the way that they that he phrases it later on when he's like loving someone is you know accepting the the bad parts of them in addition to the good parts of them is that's what that means and if you can't do that don't talk to me about you know being in love or whatever uh, that was fine yeah but the first way he phrased it really sounded like he was saying real men just pretend that their ugly wives are hot <laughs> like <laughs> I was, <laughs> it was not landing with me at first no no um, it, it doesn't help that also it's Kondo is the one that is explaining it at first as well when he's like talking about like the day, the day, the day, like a man going through it with his ugly wife, and then eventually he f changes the way she looks <laughs> so that it fits yes. in, in the rea the reality that he has or something like that. You're right; it does yeah, come like off. The, mm. Like he he creates an illusion of what she looks like to make reality bearable, and I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck, dude? <laughs> Yes, it is a it is a very like what the fuck, man? Wait, you are you okay? Yeah, like what did you just say? <laughs> kind of thing. Stop the cook. Stop. What are you doing? <laughs> what are yeah, you doing? He's, he's burning it. Stop. He's, but he does save it a little bit at the end when he's like, "Listen, man." He saves it all with the line of "girls fart and poop" as well. <laughs> yes, he, the hottest girl you know still farts and poops. Was definitely salvaged it. Yes, and he's like, "Thank you. You should have just said that from the beginning." Now I understand what you're going for. <laughs> you're right, but yeah, the the message definitely goes all over the place. Um, 
until eventually like landing it. It's kind of like seeing someone attempt to do a pole vault, get hit by a car midway, and then somehow able to still stick the landing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they save it at the end. But it's rough getting there. Yes, for it's, sure. It's rough getting there. But um, it is funny. Um, when Pinko uh, turns hot and they're all like, what the hell? It was funny. Um, the bit where uh, they have the indirect kiss mm-hmm. where Shinpachi like, drinks after her or something. And Gintoki's like, this dude is too far gone. What the fuck is wrong with him? <laughs> Because he's like, he's got the bottle and he's like spilling it all over himself because he's so flustered. Yeah. And he's like, are you fucking kidding me? You, you you got this upset about an indirect kiss in a video game? That's basically nothing at all. <laughs> and he's like freaking out. I thought it was really funny. Um, and then, yeah, the manager Tetris was also really funny. Yeah, the way that they just straight up saying like, "All right, listen," because I honestly, for a brief moment, I was like, "Are they gonna have Gintoki fuck this virtual woman?" Because he really does like take off the sachet. He takes off his main clothes, and you see like the back of him in his shirt as she's like in the bed. And for the briefest moment, I was like, "Is there really gonna be like a like it like a sex scene going on here?" And then they go like, "No, no, we can't actually show that. So we're not gonna do, we're not gonna go that far." But they go pretty far um for it and then i also like that the at the end when he's completely naked the way that they say like his message was out there but it fell on deaf ears because he he had out perverted the perverts so it made them feel uncomfortable to the point where like we can't be like him man he's out here being naked playing tetris we just can't live that life (laughs) that we have to stop playing this game um and yeah, I ended up really liking this one as well. The I really liked it that Okita was able to get his comeuppance in this one. Because <laughs> it sometimes is a 50-50 whether or not Okita ever suffers any consequences for his actions. Uh, in this one, he actually does, and he gets turned back to it. Which makes it really funny when you think about that they're actually doing this in real life. Because Gintoki is showing that he actually stripped down to be pure naked. That means that at some point, Okita must have been playing getting whipped himself and putting on the dog collar. <laughs> At some point, that surely had to have happened. But yeah, that was good. Also, the that way- bit was funny, too, where he was at the, the zoo with his girl. Mm-hmm. And all the other guys were like, I can't believe you, you fucker. How dare you? Like, th- she would never stand for this. And all of them abandoned their <laughs> other <laughs> virtual boyfriends to go over to Okita. Yep, every single one of them immediately leave to go. This says a lot about society, Zen. All of them, that also says a lot about Okita's extremely large female fan base. Yes, yes. I get it. I'm not here Most to judge you. Most popular with, with women, correct? Isn't yep. that accurate? I mean, that is pretty accurate. But to be fair, there's also a lot of, uh, I guess in their fantasy, he's not, he's not technically with women. He's typically with the dudes. Well, so, that's fair yeah that's very fair so it's a little bit different but still they they understand that he's like this um it's a different psyche that we can't get it's similar to how i occasionally am like okay with the angry type of woman that is like brown beat i assume it's the exact same it's like a female version of that it's like yeah sometimes you just want a very strong well no then i'm gonna stop talking um i also like the fighting game part where tojo also fights for a brief bit and he also fights with the manager i thought that was pretty good i also like that that pinko stood up for herself and is like whatever because it also shows that his girlfriend wasn't actually his girlfriend it was just someone who was like a call lady and that was it which makes his life that much more sad (laughs) out of all the sad dudes i think he actually has the saddest one so yeah it was really good i liked it and I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. I really didn't think that a lot of the Pinko stuff would hit as much just because it was a similar situation of, like, I don't know who this person is and who you're referencing is, but you're going such a way with it that it's still really funny even if you don't know that this is based off of a real person. That and how far they go out of the way to censor every single version of it. Like, there's a part where, like, her real husband, who is also based off a real person, shows up in the sky to give Gitoki the thumbs up to be with his wife. (laughs) Which is pretty funny. Um, so yeah, good episode. Let's move on to episode 230, which is called 
It would take too much effort to make this title sound like a text message subject. So you can kind of guess what this one's about. Kagura's talking to her friends, and they're talking about texting each other, um, and she wants her own phone. So she ends up getting a phone after Sadaharu poops out a phone. And so now she has a phone that she can have, with, and she ends up, he ended up eating three phones exactly. Um, and they go to the old, uh, they go to Gengai to quickly, like, evaluate it to see if it could still work. And he says, like, yeah, you can't call on them, but you can send texts, so here you go. So they start using the poop phones, and Kagura turns out to absolutely love the phone, and she starts, like, sending them texts everywhere even though she's in directly in the same place as them like she sends gintoki a good morning text and she's like literally right there staring at him waking up and she starts doing this a whole bunch and she keeps doing it when shimpachi's on the bathroom um and she gets really annoying with it to the point where both gintoki and shimpachi are like this is just annoying why does she send us a text message every two minutes and Atosi says, like, it's uh, it's different. It's like a, a, it's a different sex thing. It's like women, like, talking a bunch? Is, I don't know if, I, I'm, I'm not saying this message correctly. But basically she says that men are incapable of actually saying what they feel. And women like talking things out is, I think, the basic thing of it. So what she would, they she says the way that to get her to stop would be likely just responding to a text of hers because that's probably what she's just waiting for she just wants them to respond back with something um and then during this time um they start getting messages back um from i think the original owner and he starts saying like hey where are you and Gintoki sends a message back that says, like, uh, he sends his message as a subject line, like, I'm at the pachinko, um, I'm at the pachinko parlor or something like that. And it starts this long chain of texts that are, like, going back and forth between them all. And then eventually he, uh, Gintoki finally figures out that he's, uh, he didn't send the full message. So he sends it and he brings up that he has his balls uh, he's playing with his balls or something like that. And then it leads to, like, a, a string of replies from other people. Like, Kyubei is saying, like, hey. Like, they all misconstrue the context of it. Kyubei assumes that he wants to get rid of his balls. And Kyubei is like, that's great. I support this. Um, can I have them when you're done with them? Uh, Psycho replies back saying, like, I also support you. Which I was really just happy that Gintoki had such a loving network of people ready for him to transition. Yeah, just immediately ready to be on his side. Yeah, yeah so I was like, you're going to be my number one girl, uh, Pak <laughs> Pakchan. Get ready for it. Um, Tojo just is a fucking weirdo and sends out, I'm also playing with my ball. Not for no for no reason. This is really the downfall of Tojo. This these last couple episodes have made him just to be a complete fucking weirdo. I mean, he was always he was kind of weird. He is, but he's he's elevated the game to like a different level after the diaper stuff. And yeah, the, the diaper bit was definitely it didn't. It, so the thing was, his weirdness before was like. I'm way too into Cuba. Cuba. Yeah. And she's not into it, right? Yeah. Uh, the weirdness now is like, I'm a fucking freak, baby. 24 <laughs> 7 on the weirdest I'm... shit you've ever seen. Exactly. He's like 100% the freak phone. Call me up. He's like Scott Steiner. Absolute me... <laughs> freak shit at all times. 100%. He's like, yo, I heard you were kin freaky. You, you, you're playing with balls. Don't worry, dude. So am I. It's like, no, get away from here. Leave. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants you here. Why are no. you here? Go away. <laughs> Leave me be. And then finally, Katsura is the last one to talk about. He starts saying, he sends a spam message looking for people to join the anti foreigner group. And he says, like, Ichan has left a message saying, like, oh man, once I joined the anti foreigner group, all my life was better. He's like, this is just some stupid spam. Uh, uh, stupid Katsura. Um,. So finally, it's revealed that Kagura is actually meeting up with the original owner of the phone, who's called his name is called Deaf Cancer, uh, and Shimpachi fears the worst because his name is Deaf Cancer. So uh, he's trying to get to Kagura is trying to get a meeting between all of them, and then get Deaf Cancer is like saying stuff like, "My claws have never, no one has ever to, uh, survived my deaf claws" or something like that. 
Um, and everyone, uh, he, they're trying to arrange a meeting with Gintoki, and he's still talking about his balls from Pachinko. So they assume, um, Def Cancer assumes that he's like, okay, let me go to where you are. So he ends up going to like one of the, like the massage parlor, and he's angry that they don't offer a 10 minute version. There's only like, 30 and 40 minutes and he's like whatever i took the 30 minutes and then he sends a text message right afterwards and he's like i'm done and then Shibonji goes like 10 minutes bro didn't even last 10 seconds and he's worried about 10 minutes paying for it um and so through a bunch of this like chain of text it ends up with kagura kicking him in the balls and death cancer turns into like life cancer instead because he's been enlightened by the ball kick and finally, they get together, and they finally talk it out and say, like, what's been going on? And he tells them what happened. And he says, basically, all he really wants is the cell phones to be returned because his late wife gave it to him so that they could be talked to him. And they're filled with messages that he never got to send to her. But then they <laughs> they look for the messages, and all of them are him, like, visiting different, like, massage parlors. He's like, this is... Uh, th this is first of all gross old man he's like i thought you were looking for your wife he's like in order to in order to find my wife in heaven i had to go to heaven and then the response is like you're going to hell old man <laughs> disgusting um so they give him back the cell phone pretty easily and then kagura gets really hurt about it and she says i'm not gonna do that she refuses um because she's still waiting for one of them to actually reply back to her text um and then she's extremely emotionally distraught about it. She even throws one of the cell phone straps into the river. Um, and Gintoki and Shimpachi go with Deaf Cancer to visit the wife's grave. And uh, uh, he sends, like, one last message on the phone. And he gets, says, like, hey, um, you can have the phones back because I just wanted to send it. And then they, they refuse it um, because he, he's still waiting for his reply back from his wife. And... So he should have the phones with him. And even then, they're not really dudes who need phones to communicate with people is what they say. Like, they're not that kind of person. Um, and as they leave, he rece receives a response from his message. And both Gintoki and Shimpachi meet with Kagura. And it turns out that she sent the message because the message says something to the effect of like, hey, um... I got it or something like it was a it was a very sweet message but it's very clearly not from his wife because one she's dead and two it actually has a little call sign that uh, Kagura has been using throughout the entire episode so he's like his set the reason he knows that it's not her is he's like when did you start using emoticons and stuff like that so she they tell Kagura that the message was sent to heaven and she gives back the phone um and they go off to walk together um and she sees that they kept the cell phone straps and she actually went back to the river to go fix hers and they kind of just walk off together and have a nice time together and that is the uh end of episode 230 how do you feel zen it was uh, not bad not bad um i thought the bit at the end was surprisingly heartwarming considering the subject matter of the episode going on Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. It was okay. It felt very dated. I, I guess I'll say that. It felt very like yeah, it you know of twenty eleven. Oh, these cell phones and these kids. But it's also cute seeing Kagura like all excited about yeah, it. Yeah, the the thing I like about it is that it it shows Kagura just as like a regular little girl that she is. Yeah, Eric just being a kid. Yeah. In, in terms of like the kid episodes, I definitely like some of the previous ones. Like obviously the the one with the kid who potentially died. Like that one I like a whole bunch. The one about doing aerobics in the rain and stuff like that. That one I like a whole bunch yeah. more. But I really do like it when they actually take time to be like, no, Kagura is a kid and she is also a very poor kid. So she she also can't afford a cell phone. The fact that she is so happy over a poop phone of all things just kind of goes to show like, yeah. Good things don't really come that easily to Kagura at all. And yeah. I did and there was also something a little bit just like um inherent about her just like actually waiting for a text and feeling kind of hurt that they wouldn't send her a text. That they didn't reply, yeah. Yeah. So it actually comes back to what Atose said at the beginning. It's like she you should just reply back. And then both of them are like, eh, that's not the answer. And then the answer was like, yeah, it is, because she actually feels like there might be communication issues. 
and she doesn't want there to be a situation like with Def Cancer's wife where uh, he was very bad at communicating with him, so she gave him the phone to hopefully help him communicate, and then that was the last thing she ever said to him. So it comes back to they feel like they don't need the phones, and they're like, we can still talk this way. But at the same time, you're right, it is a little bit dated because it is 2011. You can tell by the cell phone design. Yeah. Yeah, it's dated. the flip phones and everything. Yeah. Um, but easily the funniest joke in the episode is that the guy's name is Death Cancer. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Extremely funny name. Uh, his name is Death Cancer, and he has a giant fucking claw hand, which is really funny. Yeah, and he's also um, a barber. <laughs> yes, all very good. Um, the bit also, I think it was just kind of, it was sweet when she was like, do you think it... Um, do you think the the message or whatever made it to to heaven or not? And Gintoki was like, "I'm sure it did." And it was very it was a very cute way to end it. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely felt that as well. So very cute episode, um, even if it is a little bit dated. So let's go on to the next one. It also was weird to think. Did you ever have one of those flip phones back in the day? Yeah, yeah, I did too. My mine wasn't especially their stuff. It's a shame because phones aren't built like that anymore. But back in the day, Japan had like the craziest fucking flip phones and imagine. Yeah, at first I had like a flip one that was just a regular flip phone that like closed like a Star Trek communicator. Yeah, mine too. Um, <laughs> and then I had one of those ones that was like a like a one solid piece, but then it slid upward to for like a two thumbed keyboard. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I had uh, one of those for a very long time. I'll say way past the time where most people would have it until eventually I had to trade it in and get a legitimate phone. Actually, funny enough, when I actually did get my legitimate phone, that's when I downloaded Dokkan, I think, not too long after. I did not play any mobile games, really, until that exact moment happened, uh, funny enough. So, there's some lore for you. That's where all the trouble started. And that's where I eventually met Zen. Here we go. Episode... Uh, where it all began. Yeah. And this is where it's going to end for one of us. I assume that we're going to do the same thing at the at our funeral. <laughs> Haunt each other, whichever ghost lives by. Episode 231. When you go to a funeral for the first time, you're surprised at how happy the people are. Which is actually kind of true. Up until the ceremony starts. <laughs> and then it stops being very happy. Um... I was about to say, go ahead, Zen, and realize... That's one of my favorite bits, though. Are you talking, wait, you're talking about 230 or 231? Uh, I'm going into 231, but what, what is your favorite bit from 230? No, no, I was talking about 231. Um, has one of my favorite bits in any of the episodes tonight. Oh, okay. Then let's go over to 231. That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to talk about our funerals um, to make the ultimate transition, but now I'm going to super transition. When you go to a funeral for the first time, you're surprised at how happy the people are. Okay, here's the plot. The restaurant owner from way, way, way back, I'm pretty sure this was an episode where they talk about a, one that made specific meals based off of your name. He's died. Um, and uh, Gintoki is absolutely devastated, and as is his, uh, has, has a known... What the fuck? Am I just, like, <laughs> Hijikata? I don't know why I started, like, fucking freaking out. Excuse me. <laughs> Striking out for a minute. <laughs> well, it doesn't help that uh, he shares the same name as a character from uh, Fake Grand Order because he's based off a real-ass man. So occasionally I want to call Hijikata the Pickle Man, but that's not what I call him here. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I call him in Fake Grand Order to distinguish him from this version of it because in Fake Grand Order he loves pickles. But in Gintama, he loves mayonnaise instead. Uh-huh. So, there we go. Anyway, they're at a funeral. Old man has died uh, from a local restaurant where the dishes were specifically catered to the restaurant themselves. Uh, and even fed the uh, Odd Jobs crew when they were broke. As they are, like, um, everyone's very sad because, of course, it's a funeral. And so they start to sit down. And they start to notice, like, some, some stuff is kind of weird. Like, uh, the monk is in a very weird outfit. And he's saying the sutra in a very weird way. Um, and they go, okay, that's kind of weird. And then Gintoki looks up and he sees a ghost. And 
and he does a really good bit where he sees the ghost and he cuts back to the ghost it cuts back to him and he cuts back to the ghost it cuts back to the ghost and it goes back to him he's like slowly raising his hand <laughs> like it looks like he's about to ask a question and instead he hits on uh, shimpachi and he says like do you see that do you see that he's like no i don't see it and then it turns out hijikata can also see the same thing so they both see that there is a ghost uh, some asshole starts playing his PSP at the funeral, stock, starts talking mad shit like he's about to fight Kiryu Kazuma, and the old man ghost just completely wrecks him across the place. <laughs> like, he says something like, the old man should be thankful that I even showed up to his boring-ass funeral, which is an extremely disrespectful thing to say at a funeral. Yes. <laughs> at a funeral of all places. Yes, um... So he beats the shit out of him, and then the old man gets crazy buff, and he turns into a buff ghost. And then Gitoki's like, this is not what I signed up for. I came here to pay my respects to a to a loving, happy man, and instead I've got a big-ass buff ghost looking directly at me. Um... And so they think that in order for the funeral to go fight, everything has to be fine, and they don't want to piss him off. So it comes time to burn incense, and Shinpachi goes up first, and he shows him how to do it perfectly. Uh, Kagura shows up and starts going like, "You got it! I knock out, I, mu- I knock off the monk, uh, and then I mess with something else, and then I I give a yo to the people or something like that." Like she completely fucks up the schedule of it. He's like, "Did you even pay attention to anything that Shinpachi did?" He's like, "I'm gonna be honest with you, my legs are kind of tired." He's like, "That does not answer the question." <laughs> Um, <laughs> but that's her way of saying, yeah, I wasn't paying attention to any of that shit. So then Okita goes up there and he's like, no worries. I'm going to do it. I'm going to revive. Um, so now you have to go up there. You need to revive the monk, pay your respects and do the thing. He's like, you got it. And he goes up there and he knocks off a guy's wig and he puts it on the monk. He's, and then he pays his respects and then leaves. He's like, we didn't say anything about reviving the monk's hairline. He's like, no, check it out. He's so happy. And you actually see the monk and he's smiling even though he's faded out because he has hair now. Um, so then it's up to Kondo to do everything. And they're like, all right, you need to go up there. You need to save the monk. And then they look and they go like, actually, there's someone else passed out too. The dude that they ripped the hair off is now pretending to be dead. He's like, why is that guy pretending to be dead in the middle of it? How come no one else is paying attention to them? Are they all just trying to save his feelings by pretending that he's not wearing a wig, that he was just wearing a wig or something? Um, and so Kondo decides to go up there. Um, and he fucks it up. I forget exactly how he fucks it up, but he fucks it up again further than anything. So this makes all, um, this makes Gintoki and, um, Hijikata extremely worried. So they try and leave, but then the ghost takes the souls of their, uh, four companions. And so they figure they have to stick around if they want to actually keep their souls. And you, they say they know for a fact it's their souls because one of the souls has, uh, Shinpachi's glasses, and he's like, why does a soul have glasses? He's like, you don't understand. When it comes to Shinpachi, his glasses are his soul. <laughs> um, so they start trying to do things normally, and uh, trying to carry off the, with the, carry on with the funeral, and so they need help carrying the coffin, and so the wife, the widow, asks them, he's like, hey, K- Gintoki, um, and Hijikata, can you help? And then they immediately fucking break their arm. Uh, and Hijikata says, I'm sorry, I just dislocated my left arm. And uh, Gintoki says the same thing. And the ghost looks like he's about to flambe their friend's souls. So they go like, no, 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 never mind. We'll help, we'll help. Um, and they go, damn, I, <laughs> I really shouldn't have done that to my arm. This is That was a bad idea. And so, uh, they say, okay, we're going to have to make sure that this casket is really good. And they go like, okay, on the count of three, lift it up. And they go, you got it. And on the count of three, they fucking power lift that shit right up into the air. The old man's body is exposed and you can see that his legs are up to where his head is at. Um, they start messing around, trying to get the head back into where the casket is. And then his foot comes out and then it looks like what is his penis pops out and then someone says, like, why is that popping out of all things? And he goes, like, well, when you're dead, you get very stiff. He goes, like, that's not the same thing. <laughs> what you're saying is completely different from anything else. Um, so they go in there, and the wife comes in and, like, chops off the, the penis and rips it off. And then it's revealed that the monk was inside the casket all along. 
And so she starts beating the shit out of the monk. And they start saying, like, does she have some aggression against this monk because of the shitty sutra he did for out at all? Um, they try to take down the coffin. At one point, I forgot, before she rips off the penis, the, the coffin gets stuck on the door <laughs> because of the penis. They never tried to break it down, so it just, like, kept up there. But anyway, the body is now gone, and it's flung onto a truck. And so Gintoki and Hijikata, along with the widow, decide to go get it back. Um, as they're getting it back, they say, they try and talk to the guy in the truck saying like, Hey, pull down. You got a dead man in your truck. Doesn't listen. Um, and then some, they try and get the body back and Kentucky says to the widow, Hey, old, uh, old lady, please hold on to me as I try and get your husband. And he falls further into the truck, and then his penis pops out. And when his penis pops out, Kentucky says, I'm not touching that. Um, widow, <laughs> get up there and duck, go find your husband's penis and bring him out here. And then she says, okay, which one? And then there a whole buttload of, like, penis-shaped animals are around. That's also, like, a food of some kind. Um... And they say, like, oh, my God, now it's, like, they look exactly like them, but they're actually animals. And so Kitoki says, okay, old lady, you're going to need to find the penis that's hidden within here. He goes, like, you, listen, you're, there's no one better suited for you than this. You've known this penis your whole life. You can do it. He's, like, believe in the dick of the owner you believe. <laughs> Something like that. And so he goes, like, she's, like, okay, you got it. So then she starts, like, hyper-focusing in, and she tries to remember the feel of it, the smell of it, the touch of it. And then she just decides to go mental and starts breaking off all these weird penis things. And eventually it ends up being that Gintoki, who didn't want to touch the penis, touches the penis. And they bring it back in, and, um... It looks like everything's real bad, um, and it looks like their friend's souls got turned into food. And then the ghost comes out, and, like, as they're, like, falling off from the truck, um, the ghost comes in and saves the wife and Gintoki, and then he kind of just says, like, listen, you guys were really fun. I just kind of wanted one last laugh, and I thank you guys very much for trying to make something that is usually very sad into something a little bit more joyful, which is something that the wife actually says at the beginning, is that the owner actually loved them. Because they always were a ton of fun. So he says, I also wanted to make sure to give you one last, like, send-off. So it reveals that the thing that he had actually been cooking the entire time was one final bowl for Gintoki and one final bowl for Hijikata. And they both go like, oh man, he was just doing this for us. And they go to have a bowl of the food that he used to make for, the, for them one last time. <clears throat> and as they go to go eat it... um. Uh, the little penis monster comes up and then uh, fade to black, and that is the end of the episode. How do you feel about this one, Zen? Uh, it was a little off the rails uh, for me. It really it's okay. Uh, the one where the the bit where the guy's like million little dick protrusions are sticking out of the side of the truck, and then the widow kicks it off, like snaps it by kicking it. Mm. Um, I was I was zoning out. Uh, but the the earlier bits were really funny. One of my favorite bits in any recent episode was when the ghost thing has their souls, and they were like, "Are those really their souls?" And the guy's like, "Yeah, look down his glasses." And they're like, "Well, why would his soul have glasses?" He's like, "No, you don't understand. Shimpachi's glasses are his soul." <laughs> Thought that was really good. Um, uh, but yeah, it was it was alright. Yeah. Uh. It reminded me a little bit of that bit from Scary Movie 3, which is maybe my favorite part of actually Scary Movie 3. So I ended up really liking this one because in Scary Movie 3, there's a part in it where um, they're at a funeral and uh, there's a little kid there and the little kid asks the lady from Scary Movie 3, like, eh, what's wrong with her? He's like, oh, she's just sleeping. And then the main dude heroine comes up and says, like, she's just sleeping. And then he goes up to her and goes, like, you need to wake up. And he starts, like, punching the body in the corpse. And he starts, like, messing with her throughout it all. And then because he, he assumed that she was dead. So we heard that he was sleeping. And it was a very dumb joke. And it's my favorite joke. And I almost died laughing of that one. This one kind of reminded me of that one. <laughs> where it's so hyper-specific of someone messing with a body at a funeral that it's uh it was funny to me 
I also did like the bit where she actually focuses in to try and remember the penis throughout her years. And then her, like, actual thing to say, like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to start chopping these things off. It doesn't actually matter. <laughs> like, all that build up of them saying, like, there's no one better suited for this than you. And she's like, you know what? You're right. I'm going to do it. And then her the immediate reaction is just like, nah, I'm just going to fucking destroy all these. <laughs> this was dumb. Very dumb. Very silly. Um, but, you know, it was a, a little fun thing. And considering that it is set in a funeral, um, I'll take it. I also did like that bit where they immediately fucking snap their arms. <laughs> because it's so quick when they do it. When they say like, hey, can you guys help us with the casket? And it's not like anything out of order. And they immediately are just like, <laughs> like they show them actually physically destroying their arm. <laughs> is really good and then um when they're going to lift the casket and they're like why did i do that <laughs> it was so stupid <laughs> why should i did that and then Kentucky's like my bone is actually sticking out it was such a bad idea <laughs> but they were so scared of the ghost there's also a part where the ghost gets so angry he goes super saiyan <laughs> and then the they think the when he before he collects the soul they say like he's gonna hit us with the spirit bomb it's like he didn't hit us with the spirit bomb. They just took his spirit. He's like, okay, I get the joke. I think mean, Hijikata's even like, okay, buddy, I get it. <laughs> you can stop. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it was a very all right um, episode. I enjoyed uh, parts of it. And then it just goes completely off the rails by the end of it. Um, which for some people will like, like me, and then others won't. And that's fine. So that's episode 231. That is another five episodes down to hatch for Gintama. All right, everyone, we made it. Woo! So let's talk about what's going to happen, hopefully, next week. So next week, we got episodes 232, 233, 234, 235, 236. Uh, I forgot. We need to mention this beforehand. How'd you like the OP and the ED? Because <laughs> they're new. <laughs> I was saving it oh for the Oh, my God, they are new. I completely, I completely forgot. Um, yeah. I really like the OP. Yeah, OP is nice. I think it goes super hard. ED is fine. Um, it's it's. I mean, they're always good. Yeah, uh, but the OP was a lot cooler for me. Yeah, I feel like the ED has a lot of like cool looks to it. It's it's more like a vibe piece than um, some of the other EDs that have been used, which I'll say have been a little bit more of a like. There's it's like not animated. That's why I'm like, oh, it's just kind of like a mood piece or just kind of setting things up. That's fine. The OP is definitely the the cool one. Like the part where he's fighting and all the different dudes he's fought for the series are in the air. Super sick. Yeah, his like his, the their outlines in like the sky. Yeah, that's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. I like the bit where um he's in the elevator and like all the female uh, except for Kagura are like in there with him, um and they give like their little longing look, which is really funny because I feel like they only play that up for during the OPs, <laughs> and then when it's <laughs> it's time yeah. for the actual show, it's more like okay, yeah, these are actually actual characters except for yeah they're all just actual characters <laughs> like none of them share like a super longing relationship with gintoki in that kind of way except for maybe a tose <laughs> in a very loving kind of pet way of this is my rabid dog that i found <laughs> yeah yeah i love my big dumb stray dog that i found <laughs> Um, but yeah, really good. They're both, uh, really sick. And the reason I brought it up because, uh, because in the next episode preview, they actually say the sexy lady in the opening will appear along with that one guy who hasn't shown up in, in forever. And I said, Sakamoto mentioned, and it's super funny that after they say that they show the woman and then they don't show Sakamoto. Yeah, Sakamoto's not in it. <laughs> he is not. He's totally not in it. And I was like, that's so fucking funny that they just didn't put him in there because they know. Um, there's also a really funny bit where, uh, it's not supposed to be funny, but there's a really nice shot where it's them as kids with their, um, their, their master. And then when they cut to it next, they're like ready in like their war gear. And instead of the master, I think that's Sakamoto. <laughs> it is. Yeah. In the hat. Yeah. That's in the Sakamoto. Hat. Yeah. It's like, damn, he showed up. <laughs> he made sure to get paid for this one showing up in the OP once again. Yeah, it's funny because he's not in the in the like flashback bit with the master and no, the main three. No, he's not. It, but but uh, he shows up for that's what I was like. I was like, oh, is that the actual master up here? It's like, no, I'm pretty sure that's fucking Sakamoto. Because <laughs> I was wondering at the beginning, it's like, where is he? He usually is always in the OPs, but he hadn't been one. But now I was like, okay, now that I've looked at it, that's where he's at. Cool. So yeah, looking forward to that. So that is going to be the Renho arc, which is two thirty two to two thirty six. 
um, which will feature Sakamoto in it, and it looks like it has Elizabeth stuff. So all our early, remember our early um, predictions about what's up with Elizabeth that we had all the way at the beginning of Shonen Archive? <laughs> All the bits we were talking about, what's, what the fuck is up with Elizabeth? We will find out the actual answer, hopefully, in this one. Uh, I don't actually know, but I assume there will be some questions answered here, because it looks like there was a full planet of them in the preview and stuff. But yeah, that's going to be hopefully next week, and that's only going to be one, two, three, four, five episodes. And then the next week after that, it will probably be another... Hmm, let me see... Probably be another... Oh, there might be... Hmm. I'll look into it. I'll get back to it because I need to figure out some stuff because it looks like we're going to start once again heading into a lot of big stuff going forward. So we might need to batch a bunch of episodes a little bit longer to make sure that the next one, uh, an entire arc can be covered in, in one go and stuff like that. But anyway, that's uh, what we got looking forward to. So now if you want more Zen content, you can go over to Zen's channel where he does Shonen and Chill. Zen, what's going on in Shonen Land right now? Kagurabachi remains goaded. Uh, it's it's crazy. Uh, the guy who made Tokyo Revengers, which was not a Shonen Jump manga, I believe, mm -hmm. um, got published in mm -hmm. Shonen Jump. Pretty cool. Yep. Um, decent, decent so far. I mean, it's like not long enough to really tell if it's going to be good yet, but it's solid beginning. Mm -hmm. Um... Sakamoto Days is crazy. Uh, I, need to I recommend some. you read that. Yeah, I need you to do. It, it's wild right now. Yeah, I need to catch up to it because a friend of mine who went to Japan was reading Sakamoto Days. I'm like, oh, no, he's going to catch up. And <laughs> I've been telling him to read it this entire time, and it's very soon he's going to catch up to me. <laughs> and it's going to reveal that <laughs> he's going to see that I'm a fraud, and I didn't can't keep up with Sakamoto Days because I got busy. <laughs> um. Yeah, very good, very good uh, manga. Hopefully one day it gets an anime so we can watch it for Shonen Archive as well. Uh, anything else going on in Chump? Sakamoto Days? Um, nothing huge. I mean, we're reaching the... we got to be reaching the end soon for MHA and JJK. We're kind of circling the finish line here, but... Mm -hmm. Both of them currently running towards it at the end. We'll see who actually reaches it. Who do you think finishes first? Uh, MHA feels closer. Mm -hmm. But I could be wrong there. It, it just—it feels like MHA has almost nothing left to do, and it's at the point of an ending where it's like creating more stuff to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where like all this, there, there's obviously nothing left to talk about, but they're like, we we want to make more chapters, so we're we're creating new problems to resolve right now. <laughs> um, yeah, just we we. Need whereas JJK something. still has some stuff it hasn't touched on yet, but I don't know. We'll see. They're both kind of speed running it, so it could be either one at any point suddenly. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll continue seeing the race. I'm my current bets is that JJK will end unexpectedly before my hero finishes, and it will continue on forward. <laughs> the the message is the my overall message of that ending taking forever and my hero will stay true and it will be there until the end that another series will finish before <laughs> it has a chance to actually finish but we'll see uh so yeah go check out Ch zen's channel for that and then are you planning to do iron mon on your twitch that's the plan right now. I don't know how to set it up, so I'm still trying to figure out how to do that. But if I get it set up, I'm going to try and do, like, three or four Iron Mon streams for a few hours a day every week. Okay. And you can find Zen's Twitch on uh, the episode description. I have it in there all the time. And uh, for me, what the hell am I doing? I'm We finished Sonic Adventures, so those episodes are We did, out. yeah. Well, that's a, that's a big spoiler, because I think the last one you uploaded was big. It was big. Um... But it's it's uh by the time they hear this, it should be done because these don't release till Saturday, and there was only f let me see Amy comes out today, then Amy part two the hammering, and then finally Supersonic. So there's only three episodes left. I have to create a playlist so I can say like yo check it out here it is all for all of it, in one go. And that was a hell of a good time. My brother even joins us in for the end bit again. He was only there for the Knuckles bit. He's also there in spirit throughout it all. <laughs> you can hear yeah, him shouting yeah. at us. They figured out how to make him audible, which is yeah, nice. Yes, yeah. I mean, he can always just sit next to me and join up with me, but it's way funnier to me than him. That's how he does it in my Fago videos as well. <laughs> he just will occasionally yell stuff at me, <laughs> and that, that counts as it. The joys of uh, recording in the same room. 
but yeah, that will come out, and then I'll have to figure out something next to do. Still planning, still trying to figure out whether I want to do Final Fantasy VII stream start up again. Start checking out Air Bud, figure out that. Um, I have this whole idea centered around Final Fantasy to do, but that requires me to actually beat the Final Fantasy games first. So, <laughs> two of them down. <laughs> two down. Technically three if you want to count Final, Fa Final Fantasy IV, but I really want to check out the DS version um, and have a re-look at Final Fantasy IV to, in order to keep it fresh in my mind when I'm judging all of them fairly. Um, and, of course, more for Ghost stuff, as always. I'm getting a lot of dates wrong for when stuff is about to come out. So that's always fun. It's always <laughs> it's always fun to be wrong about something and then immediately release a video saying so. Well, I was wrong about that. So <laughs> here it is. Uh, real glad that this thing released uh, around the time that I was planning to do something else big with the game, and now I've completely have to dedicate everything to here. And yeah. And then I also upgraded a bunch of other stuff. So hopefully in this episode, you'll hear Zen a little bit more than me, and I won't be so unbelievably fucking loud all the time, which is like a running thing that I always have a problem with me on my microphones, is that I can never control the volume of my voice, uh, which is a real problem. <laughs> Uh, but hopefully that'll help out a little bit. Improving the setup I got while I have the chance. So a lot of fun stuff. Go check it out. And yeah, that's it for this week of Shonen Archive, everyone. As always, if you want to show support for Shonen Archive, the best thing that you can do is just watch it. You can even comment, tell us anything you want to talk about, talk about in the uh, comments down below. I love reading that stuff. Even if you're too busy, it's all good. Even just watching it is good enough. Um... Uh, and you never have to worry about it going away, because as long as me and Zen are alive, and as long as I remember, we will keep doing Shonen Archive. Um, thankfully for me, the main channel's focus is for Go, so I'm allowed to do stuff like this, because I know I don't have to care that much <laughs> about it reaching some kind of algorithm thing. We do this for the love of the game. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And that's it for everyone. Time for the new ending, Shonen Archive. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Another gunshot. <laughs> One more time.